is it? Foolish, that is. <laughs> merchant, are you? No. Oh. oh, you're not a merchant? No, and I'm afraid we'll prove a disappointment to you. We've very little money. Oh. Very handsome cloak you got here. Are you? Oh, so it's a knight you are then. It's a noble knight and a brave crusader. You are addressing Sir Ivanhoe of Rotherwood. I recognize you, Sir Ivanhoe. Even in these wild parts, your deeds are known. Pleased I am to make your acquaintance. My name is Llewellyn. Robber, cattle thief, rebel, and poet. Whither are you bound? For the monastery of St. Augustine. The Lord Abbot there is an old friend of mine. And he sent me word they have sore troubles and need my help. Proceed, Sir Ivanhoe. Give them your help. And tell the good Abbot that Llewellyn, like you yourself, Attacks only tyranny and injustice. I wish you well. We wish you well, Llewellyn. Oh, and this Lord Abbot is good, and he's some bad. Welcome to our monastery. It's very kind of you to have made such a great journey, half across England, to favor a few poor monks. Well, it's a pleasure to be here again, Father. And I'm looking forward to seeing many old friends. All in good time. But now, you and your companions must be both tired and hungry. First, you must have a good meal, then a long rest. In the morning, we'll talk over our affairs. Well, thank you, Father. My boy, how you've grown. Broader, taller, tougher. <laughs> Oh, hello, Brother Edward. Good evening, Sir Ivanhoe. Yes, I remember every stone, every pillar and passage of this great house. The time I spent here has stood me in good stead. Though I fear I was never a model pupil. You must remember, Ivanhoe, the purpose of education is to develop a fine character. I think we've done that. Well, it was a long time ago, as you say, Brother. <laughs> <laughs> No, Ivanhoe, on that score we have no complaints. Indeed, during the past four years, our harvests have been greater than ever and finer. Heaven has blessed our humble labors. Well, this is a riddle. You, you say you prosper, yet you need my help. It is even so, my son. The Lord giveth, but the rule of Prince John taketh away. And taxes, so that's it. There's the record. The tax is heavy, but no heavier than those which others must pay. Such amounts are common enough these days. The amount is not the problem. The tax must be paid on the first day of each month. Not in goods, always in gold marks. To whom is it paid? The gold must be taken to the castle of Ranerton and handed over to Sir Rupert de Bracy. De Bracy? I've heard of him. Greedy, grasping, a notorious miser. Sir Rupert the Ragged, the people call him. The same. He's told me, quite unashamedly, that he covets this monastery and its lands. If a time comes when we cannot meet our debt, he'll claim the monastery and its lands. How far is Ranatag Castle from here, my Lord Abbot? A day and a half away on the borders of Wales. Each month, one of the community must make the journey. The countryside swarms with Celtic robbers from the mountains. During the past seven months, five of the brothers have failed to return. 
Somewhere between here and Ranerton, they vanished, and so was the money. Have you any idea, my Lord Abbot, what fate befell these monks? Only that it was no accident. They disappeared without the smallest trace. That doesn't happen by chance. I see. You're certain none of them reached Ranerton? I'm certain of nothing, Ivanhoe. But Sir Rupert insists that he didn't receive the five payments of gold, and so they must be made up to him. Is it possible? Could this Rupert be so mad with greed that he stoops to robbing monks? If so, he stands to gain in two respects. Firstly, he receives double the amount of taxation. And second, as the Lord Abbot said, one day when the tax can't be paid, he will claim this monastery and all its lands. Of course, it's very wrong to have uncharitable thoughts of any man. There are so many outlaws abroad. The followers of Llewellyn the Celt. Naturally, Sir Rupert blames them. Llewellyn's a rogue, but a good rogue. And I have every reason to believe that he wouldn't lay a hand on a brother of St. Augustine. Not for all the gold in Christendom. But guessing will not solve this mystery. We must make a plan. Good day, young sir. Have you lost your way? No, father. My lord abbot said I might go where I pleased. See everything in the monastery. Good, good. What is this place? This is called the library. Library? What are you making? A book, my son. Or rather, a copy of this one. What is the purpose of a, a book? To preserve and spread knowledge and the holy word. Books are teachers and good friends, my son. For those who can read. Yes, but it must take many years to learn this reading and writing. For some, yes. For others, a few months' study brings forth some skill. It depends on the lad. Ah, they're summoning us to the great chapter hall. Come, we will go together. The Lord Abbot has given me permission to speak to you on this matter, which causes you all so much concern. You have been continually robbed by thieves, as yet unknown. And I have an idea which might put matters right. But first, I need your help. I know it is a rule of this order that no brother may ask another whence he came, or what trade he followed, or anything else concerning his manner of life before he entered these walls. Yet I have permission to ask you this, and only this. Who among you knows how to handle a sword? Yes, I remember you. Brother Garrett. So your arm has kept its strength and your eye its quickness. Thank you. Well done, good brother. I fought many a worse swordsman who courted his profession. Well, come now. There must be others among you who know a sword from a broomstick. Excellent. Brother Gareth will be your commander. Gareth will forge your weapons. Brother Tristan will take your names now. If you feel you have the strength and the skill, Brother Gareth and I will test you. And others will be needed in the forge to help Gareth and to cook for those who take arms. For anyone who has the will, work can be found. Good morning, my Lord Abbot. How are they progressing? Well, fine. I should feel much happier if it could be done without bloodshed. No, no one could be sure of that. But the brothers are being trained only to defend. 
Use your feet, Brother Winford. That's what the good Lord gave them to you for. My <laughs> feet and this heavy sword are both together too much to protect, Brother Gareth. Now, the day after tomorrow is the first of the month, and another payment is due. This time, I will be your messenger to Randerton, with Gareth and Companion and Brother Gareth's band following within call. I promise you, there'll be no violence, unless we're attacked. company. This is the road to Ranerton. Here is the track that runs parallel with it, through the forest and along the river bank. And the distance between the two? Never more than a mile, but for great stretches it's just a few hundred feet. You hear that, Bart? Now you patrol the land between and try to keep both parties in sight as long as you can. You understand? Aye, aye, sir. I understand. Good boy. Cromer Field, there's a hostelry. Should reach there by sundown. The innkeeper is well known to us. He's a good man. From there, it's not far to Ranerton. Fine. Let's be on our way. Brother Martin! I found these last night. Found? Uh, well... Well, I don't think the Lord Abbot would sanction this, but it's all in a worthwhile cause. <laughs> down and rest yourself, good fathers. My husband and I expected you sooner. We've been sick with worry all day. Welcome, good fathers. My wife will get you supper. Go on quickly, my dear. We thank you kindly for your hospitality. But you must forgive our lack of conversation. Our hearts are still heavy with sorrow for our missing brothers. Of course, of course. It's a black business. When they didn't turn up here, of course, we feared the worst. That Llewellyn. What a murderous rogue he is. So none of the five got as far as the hostelry? No. If they had, they'd have been safe. Rannett was quite near to here. And they're usually some of Sir Rupert's men-at-arms here to give escort the rest of the way. I see. What a pity Sir Rupert can't see his way clear to offer protection over the whole route. How could they? With such a meager force, only 30 men to guard that great castle and ill-paid at that. Sir Rupert the Ragged is rich. Very rich. But it pains him to part with a halfpenny. So I've heard. I'll go and help my wife prepare the supper. I wonder if the brothers like coming here. They're certainly looking after us, ain't they? Uh, an excellent meal, landlord. Thank you, father. How's my lord Abbot these days? Well, there's a saint if ever there was one. You know our good father well? Oh, yes, indeed. I was an inventor before I took this in. That's a hapless existence, if ever there was one. However, the abbot kindly asked me to design a new wine press for him. Oh, I see. <sighs> well, uh, by your leave, it grows late. Yes, of course, of course. Your room is ready. Room? We are only poor monks, landlord. We'll throw some straw in the corner. Under my roof, the brothers of St. Augustine are given only the best, and there's no question of payment. The main bedroom has been prepared for you. It's that door on the right there. Bless you, my son. I hope you'll be comfortable. Good night.
crowd, eh? <laughs> Robert Gentry. Ah, it's a bit soft for me. Well, some straw on the floor if you like. <laughs> Even if the roof does leak, that'll keep the rain off. Well, one of us had better stand guard. All right, I'll take first watch. three hours. All right. to keep out the rain. And now we know what happened to this missing monk, sir. He was smothered to death by this foul invention. Rupert's men are down below. Bart came to warn us. Bart? Listen. Quick. No wonder the abbot sent two monks this time. Oh, this one seems heavier than the others. <laughs> Sir Rupert will go mad with fury when I tell him once again the gold hasn't arrived. Will you believe that story about those outlaws again? I doubt it. More than likely, he'll accuse the abbot of never sending the money. <laughs> well, your fool is blinded by his avarice. Then we shall perform a small miracle and open his eyes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
you in battle once again. You remember that campaigning creed? Enough, Llewellyn. I'm no longer a knight. No man serves me. And I am no longer a squire, for I serve no man. I've taken an oath never to speak of the past. This habit is my armor now. You're not. Though I still remember my young, brave Lord Gareth. I shall keep silent too. My men are well. Shocked they would be if they knew I'd fought for England. <laughs> How down well, Sir Ivan? Very well, Bart. Llewellyn, how did you find us? The monks followed you. We followed the monks. <laughs> Perhaps now the good abbot will believe that I am a friend of his, that I only rob those who are themselves robbers. I'll tell him. Yeah. Well, not one life lost and all our enemies captured. Well done, Llewellyn. And thank you, lads. And well done, Brother Gareth and my brothers in arms. As the spiritual and temporal ruler in the eastern precincts of this county, I've decided to send the prisoners to Gloucester Town and duly given trial. As the civil law provides, and may the Lord show them mercy. Unfortunately, not all of the gold is recovered. The landlord and his wife had to give the soldiers who helped them a fair share of the spoils, so that they would report to Sir Rupert that the monks had failed to reach the hostelry. Then they blamed Llewellyn's outlaws. True. Uh, my men were sent to act as escort from the inn to my estate, and I assure you they were sent in good faith. Oh, no one doubts that. But if you'd paid your soldiers fairly and fed them decently, they wouldn't have fallen to temptation. When the full story is told at the trial, you will have to accept some of the blame on this account. That will not make you very acceptable at Prince John's court, will it, Sir Rupert? No, I, I suppose not. Well, surely the wise course for a ruler who has pressed a willing people too hard is to relinquish some of the harsh burden he has imposed on them. Then at least no one can accuse you of provoking disorder. I tis agreed. Then with the Lord Abbot's permission, we will detain you no further. Good day, Sir Rupert. Poor man, his mind is sick. Now, my brothers, you must return to work. Come here, young Bart. You've played a brave part in all this. I know you wish to become a knight, but times have changed. These days, a knight must have learning as well as courage and fighting skill. Stay here with us and we'll teach you. This is a rare offer, Bart. And remember, Sir Ivanhoe himself studied here. We'll come and see you, son. If you think so, Father, I'd like to. I think you're wise. Now, let's see what we can find, eh? Ah. Goodbye, Ivanhoe. Don't leave it so long again. Thank you, Father. We won't. Goodbye, Gus. We'll look after the boy. Thank you, my Lord Abbot. Injustice he is fighting to win a better day. Shout a cheer! 